giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with Stryker. Discover why so many FIRST alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash first to view openings, internships, and co-ops tailored to those who are in FIRST. That's careers.stryker.com forward slash first. And by the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And also, viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Capital RI3D mentor for FRC 225 and 2481. I'm Eric Drost. I mentor FRC 1923, and I'm here with First Capital RI3D as well. And we're going to host you here as we go through many of the awesome subsystems that we've been working through here all day. We're trying to do a little bit of everything. That way people can see all the different prototypes, working through mechanisms holistically, see a lot of the different experiences that we go through as a team. And we've got a lot of achievements that have been done here in these short 10 hours that we've been here so far. Um, so to start with, I'm going to call over the drive team, and they're going to come over here and talk a little bit about what we've got going on with this part of the robot right here. Hi, uh, my name is Owen. I'm an alumni of FRC 303. Hi, I'm Michaela. I'm an alumni of uh, FRC 225. Hi, I'm Connor McBride. I'm an alumni and mentor of Team 166 Chop Shop. Um, so going in today, going into today, we had a decent idea of um, that we wanted to go with a West Coast drive. Simple to build. We had a lot of materials, and we could get it together really fast. Um, so as soon as kickoff came out, we read through the design constraints and came up with a 32-inch long, 28-inch wide, eight-wheel West Coast drive. Um, we have two-speed ball shifters on there with three neos on each side. Um, we have a one-eighth inch drop center, which is the standard for the West Coast Drive um, bearing blocks, and it took us around like eight hours to yeah. mechanically finish it, and then we spent about uh, another hour or so getting some of the electronics wired up. Not done yet, but enough to do some demos with the controls team later. Um, it went together real smooth, pretty much how we expected. Um, a few mistakes here and there, <laughs> but we, we worked through them and, and got it done pretty quickly. Yeah, um, just a quick note, we chose six inch uh, wheels, um, and part of the reason of the six inch wheels and the eight wheels um, was one, stability for shooting. With six wheels, you can rock back and forth between your front wheels and your back wheels, which makes it um, inconsistent when you're shooting. So with the eight wheel, you can balance in the middle. And we also picked eight wheels and the larger wheels so that we could get over the bump. <coughs> um, that is in the middle of the field, uh, mainly for autonomous, where we're planning on being able to grab the five balls in the middle. Yeah, and I worked on the CAD of the drivetrain. It went together pretty well. Uh, overall, I think the most difficult portion of the whole drivetrain was being able to, I guess, get the, uh, the electronic board figured out. We, uh, we wrote some code in it in a for the Omeo, we went to go put it on the bed, and unfortunately, our piece was too big, so we ended up cutting it by uh, just on the bandsaw. But it worked out pretty well. Um, but this thing is—it's—it's it's looking pretty good. We're looking forward to seeing what software can do with it, get it moving for you guys later on tonight. All right, thanks everyone. In particular, I want to call out some of the amazing sponsored products that we have uh, from uh, the sponsors of First Capital RI3D that we're using on this robot as well. We've got gussets from the Thrifty Bot here. They're very, very effective gussets. We've been very happy with them and using them here on this robot. We're also using bearings from the Thrifty Bot on this robot as well uh, for our drivetrain. Uh, so you can see how those work here as to after we get it driving. It's not going to be today, but in our future updates, you'll see. Um, there, we've been very happy with those bearings so far. Um, Tyler, you wanted to talk uh, about our giveaway? 
But yeah, as you see, Ben Lair is holding a uh, Annie Mark uh, t-shirt uh, that will be giving away on stream there. So if you're watching live, uh, there will be a keyword for you to type in a little bit later on during the stream. Uh, don't forget to make sure you click that follow button. That's how you're going to be entered in to win uh, any of the fun giveaways. Uh, then type in the keyword. If you do choose to subscribe, help fun, stay loud, live, and independent, you'll get five times luck to win uh, the, our giveaways as well, too. So we'll be doing that a little bit later on during the stream. It is an XL shirt I do want to point out uh, for that one in particular. Uh, Sometimes we can get it straight from Animark, but this is one that they sent to us for XL, which we're delighted to give away. Uh, so just a heads up for that. Um, but good luck, guys, during that. Thanks to Animark for providing that giveaway. Uh, and thanks to all of our suppliers here for a lot of the cool stuff here in RE3D. All right. Uh, at this point, do you want to move on to the intake mechanism? All right, so does the intake crew want to come out? They've put together, I think th they are on iteration three now or so. Hello, my name is Michaela. Um, I'm with uh, First Capital I RI3D, and I'm an alumni of Team 365. And I'm Richard Skinner. I am an alumni and mentor of TechFire 225. All right, so with our initial intake design, we were attempting to have used the mechanisms and the omnis to center any of the energy cells we were intaking from any position. It turned out when intaking multiple of them, they would end up colliding in the center and because they squish, neither of them would get the right of way and go through. So we ended up scrapping that design and moving to an intake that just dumps it into a hopper inside the robot. Uh, yes, yeah, so we did have to redesign our entire hopper mechanism so that um, the balls could be intaked anywhere along this, uh, along the wheels and still uh, end up inside of it. So we'll get to that later. Um, so we, this is mostly compliance wheels, which do s help squish down the balls. Um, and on the sides, we have Omni wheels to help center the ball in case it's picked up on the side, we don't want it shooting out. Hey, chat, just a reminder real quick, if you do have any questions for our RE3D team, make sure you take at first updates now in chat. That's how your questions are going to be uh, answered. We have Heather's collecting those questions, and then uh, we'll be asking them uh, as we go through the stream as well, too. So once again, at first updates now with your question, and that's how we'll get them in for the uh, first capital RE3D team. <laughs> so yes uh we are still it's a work in progress so in our uh future renditions of this we're going to put a hood over this um so that the balls uh will be inside the mechanism and won't be able to jump out like you just saw Uh, we do have a question for the intake team. What happened to the vectored intake? Can you talk about that a little bit more? That design worked when it came to intaking a single one of the energy cells at a time, but when you, we intook two of them at the same time, they would run into each other, and because of these game elements having so much squish in them, they would end up sort of fusing together in the middle and neither of them would actually go through the intake. Yeah, I want to call out also specifically when you're intaking the ball off of the, um, I forget what it's called, like the berm or something like that. Yeah, whatever that metal piece is that's an inch and an eighth tall, um, that it's a little bit different in taking off that because it's a little higher off the ground. So just be aware of that as you're going through teams. Um, that's one of the things that we're testing with and it's one of the reasons that we're moving more toward like a straight up intake with just a little bit of the vectored intake wheels to move it in um, to bring it into a more of a circular hopper for, uh, for, uh, for moving forward that we'll get into as opposed to something that funnels it right away. So, um, you know, you'll see it come together as we continue to go through in multiple days, but uh, right now we're, we're still going through iterations. All right, um, hopper team, you wanna come on up and we can walk through this. Hey, 
Hey guys, uh, my name is Sarath. I'm a uh, mentor for FRC Team 1923. I'm David Hilker. I am a FRC alum from Team 225. I'm Robbie Mangru. I'm an alumni and mentor of Team 219. Uh, so when we originally started with the indexing machine, uh, we were looking to connect the balls coming in from the intake up to the shooter. Um, so originally we had planned uh, looking around 2012, uh, what was that again, rebound rumble, uh, for inspiration with a conveyor system to uh, take it up to the hood shooter, um, whether that be routing through different ways. Um, but then eventually we saw that the intake was going to pull them in, not exactly into a center line area, but more any, kind of, any given space within the frame. So from there we thought, hey, why don't we pull it in and instead look to 2009 Lunacy to how um, those game pieces were manipulated. So what we have here is a bit of a circular hopper area um, with a moving blade on the bottom made out of polycarbonate. That'll catch the ball, uh, and then we have a stack of mechanum wheels there that'll uh, be rotating, and then with the rollers, it'll hit a wall here at the end, and then start to lift up. Um, from there, it'll hit a feeder wheel, which will stop. Uh, the shooter wheel will rev up, and then the feeder wheel will start to move the balls from the indexer into the shooter. I might want to try this one first. You all might be dead. Eric, you mind? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Either way, you can see right here into the polycarbonate that we have a bit of a scoop here along this profile in order to catch the ball. Okay. That's better. We've been trying to troubleshoot this. Um, when multiple ball go balls go in at once, it tends that they get stuck on each other and raise each other up at the same time. Um, we've been trying to troubleshoot this in multiple ways. We still have other options too, where we can actually go for a screw mechanism driven by Omni Wheels Up. Um, but for now, we're just trying to get the uh, Mechanum kind of elevator lift style to uh, work here. Um, so just one, one quick comment I have. Uh, the reason that we are choosing to go down this route is uh, these balls are very, very squishy, and they were having a hard time serializing them into uh, a controlled and spaced out path without uh, using something like this. So that's what the intake team was alluding to with um, having some difficulty getting the balls to vector when you're trying to handle more than one at a time. All right. Thanks, Hopper team. Shooter team, you're up. Yeah. So we'll move the camera right over here. Here you go. Yeah. So I'm Samantha. I'm an alum and mentor on Team 3081, the Robo Eagles. Hi, I'm Andre. I'm an alum of FRC Team 20, and I currently help with scouting and strategy on 5254. Yeah. So um, this intake um, was actually taken off of. 225's um, 2017 robot for shooting fuel. Um, so we made a few modifications. Um, so we had to change um, the distance between the wheels and this back plate. And then it was also six inches longer. So we cut that down. Um, works pretty good. So um, yeah, I was going to say something else. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much. Um, these wheels are pretty hard. I forget what they're called. Um, Fairline wheels. wheels. Yeah. Um, cool. Currently, we have two 775 motors on here, um, but we want to look into uh, putting Neos on there so that we have um, a better uh, retaliation from the motors and the PID loop when we're shooting five consecutive balls so that the motor speed can be consistent throughout when it's shooting. Uh, we're going to look into that later today, but for now we have the 775s and it works pretty well.
Wanna, all right, you want to show? Yeah, we'll show it one more time, but we'll show it from the other angle. That way, everyone can see exactly where it's going. All right. First time, first time, right? Yeah. Okay, now let's circle, circle back over here. Yeah, and um, let's bring up the color wheel team. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, we got some questions. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I asked a couple questions real quick. Uh, we had from, uh, bu -bu -bu. Couple of moved around here. Um, from G, uh, 64 bit GPU uh, asks, is the high goal worth going for? And I think we might have just proven that, uh, that there's a lot of viability uh, with that. But I guess from the from the shooter team, we are going high goal. Is that correct? That's our main objective here. And why is that? Uh, well, what, what that just proved too is that the big high goal is fairly easy to hit. Like, you don't need that much accuracy at all. Um, it, it should be pretty easy to get balls into the big high goal. The small high goal, um, that's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. It's going to be pretty hard. So it's a small ball and a small. Ball. It's it's really going to depend on how accurate you think your team can get a shooter tuned in on just that little tiny small spot. And also for that small hole, there is a much smaller area of ground on the floor that you can shoot from and still be able to get it into the goal. With the big goal, you can shoot from way over here, you can shoot from way over there, but there's really a small area patch on the ground with the uh, back small goal. What is the uh, distance on the uh, shot we just did, by the way? Yeah, the distance on the shot we just did is probably about 20 feet. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's we're, we're working on it, and uh, we'll continue working on it, and you might see more tonight. Yeah. I didn't get to work on the shooter today, um, but do we have any concerns of all that backspin, of it hitting the top or the floor and having it bounce back out like the Poos ball did in the Einstein in 2014? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, man. Yeah. Hey, you know, we're, we still got lots of testing and prototyping to do, right? So, um, you know, we'll give a shot. If we think it makes sense, we might try doing the double wheel. We'll see. But, um, you know, right now we'll keep running with this until we find if there's an issue or not. This is less motors and it's easier to do and then, you know, a whole number of things. Also, if yeah. it hits the backboard. You got to come <laughs> over here. Yeah. Also, if it hits the backboard on the back thing, it goes down rather than bouncing straight back out. <laughs> Another question uh, coming yeah. in uh, from... Uh, Quantum Cyclone, do you plan on mounting the shooter on any sort of turret? Uh, can you talk a little bit more about turret viability? Yeah, I mean, the turret's, the turret's totally viable in many situations. Um, it's not something that we're going to be showing this weekend, but uh, it's definitely something that many teams, I'm sure, will consider. Because there's a couple, there's a bunch of positions on the field where it's very interesting to use a turret, like um, right behind the color wheel here for a really long shot as a, a flat surface, or there's a number of different places that you might want to make a, uh, a consistent turret lineup uh, shot to, to use, but it's not something that we're going to be showing today. All right, uh, next question, uh, and I'm not sure if some of these were answered yet, so we'll see. Uh, uh, Pick Cat Zerg, uh, what's the ratio and wheel size on the shooter? It, it is, uh, with the ratio on wheel size here, let's, let's come over here. So everyone can see. So this is a four-inch Fairlane wheel here, right? So um, with that right now, these are 775 Pros with a 5 to 1 reduction uh, is what we have right now. Obviously, if we switch to Neos, it's going to be something totally different. Um, but we think to, in order to make a distant shot at that level of consistency, we really might need to do that. So that's one of those things that we're, that we're looking at here. Anything to add? No. All right.
Cool. Um, any other questions on Shooter? Yep. Uh, another one to ask on here. Uh, Anthony3175, uh, what is the flywheel made out of? Where will we get something like that? Yeah. These particular ones are purchased from McMaster Car. They, um, if you look for, I think it's called like drive roller or something like that. Um, yeah. Fly, oh, the, the flywheel. This one right here, the metal one. Oh yeah, that's a that's a homemade metal uh, two uh, two pound flywheel from 2017 right there. So it's made out of steel. Uh, Jaws 4671 asks the uh, uh, question. I don't think we have an answer for yet, but how accurate is it? How accurate? We're 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 getting there. <laughs> I mean, I, we first time, yeah. So. <laughs> yes. Uh, and it's I think been ten hours, so. I think last question in regards to motors, uh, I'm not sure if this question was for driver or for this, but uh, have you considered what other motors might have you uh, considered, Neos, anything like that at all uh, for this? Yeah, yeah. I'll let you take that. Yeah, Yeah, we're also considering looking at between two and four Neos for this. Um, We're going to be experimenting with that later tonight into tomorrow, so keep posted. We'll be on that. All right, then we have one more question in regards to shooter, and then we're going to move on. We'll, we'll take, if you guys have more questions, we'll take those a little bit later. Uh, Neshuel asks, how much compression do you currently have in the ball, and what is the gap between the wheels and the wall of the shooter? Yeah. Uh, so right now, the gap between here, this is about six inches, um, give or take how much I could precisely measure it with a measuring tape. Um, we can actually adjust this right here, um, so we could test with different um, compression um, amounts but so far we think this is pretty good cool um since we've got it right here let's go ahead and move right on to the color wheel so i'm going to hand it over to alex I'm Alex, I'm alumni of Team 550 and a mentor for Team 11, and I worked on the uh, color wheel movement today. Um, I went something simple so we could put it just about anywhere. We upgraded to a Neo 550 on it so we have encoder feedback, and currently on the drivetrain is the color sensor. So basically we'll take the encoder feedback because we can calculate our rotations of the wheel based on the rotation of the uh, wheel driving it and we can take that to factor our rotations then the color wheel when we need to assign it all right cool thanks Alex Um, moving over here now with that that's a good way to feed right into our controls team and what they've been working on so feel free to come on up here guys and you might go ahead and start with uh, what's going on with the color sensor so we, we have a little demo we have set up on the rudimentary control system we have right now with the uh, Rev V3 color sensor that we uh, uh, demoed in, a, in an earlier video and earlier on stream. Um, but basically you can see our, uh, our shuffleboard um, application here is, is showing all the different values from the, the V3 color sensor. Um, and as we move them from place to place, even at this height, uh, it, you can see even with, without calibrating it, in the lighting with Rev's default calibration, uh, it's a very consistent way to register each of the colors. Hi, my name's Stephen Carmain. Um, I, I was I, I was an alumni of tech, the Technocats, and now I'm a mentor of the Livonia Warriors 60, uh, 2832 and 6861. So um, we basically just took Rev's sample code and put it in and we, we've gotten good results with the color sensor so far. Uh, the one thing we've noticed so far is the, the red calibration seems to be a little off. Uh, the one thing, when, when a team goes to a competition, we highly suggest taking the time during field calibration to take your color sensor out and check, check the lighting on the field because we've seen variations here. And I'll hand it over to talk about the future of the, what we're doing on controls. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm Andrew Lobos. I'm an alumni and mentor of uh, Team 225, um, and I'm the controls lead for uh, First Capital RA3D. Um, 
Yes. So uh, as we've been getting hardware here, we have the the drivetrain. So we uh, quickly wired it up um, before the check-in. Um, <laughs> we <laughs> we reused power poles that we found, um, so we didn't have to splice anything new and waste wires. But uh, it's not the prettiest thing. Um, next, we'll be working on getting some uh, can wires in there. Um, and then uh, as uh, subsystems become available, like the shooter, um, starting to tune control loops. Uh, I'm Adam from uh, uh, alumni of Tech Fair 225. And just to say, uh, you can follow along our um, software development on GitHub. Our repository is public at um, github.com slash FRC team 225 slash RE3D 2020. Uh, you can go and start there to keep watching as we add cool new stuff because we've got a lot of cool things planned. So I know you guys talked about this in the YouTube video, but it was just pointed out to me that um, you guys tried the color sensor both with a piece of plastic over it and without, and that changed the results a bit. You want to talk about that? So what we found is that when you uh, are looking at the color sensor values through the Lexan, um, as if you would be looking from the bottom, uh, when you have the feedback light on on the, the color sensor, it actually gives a significant glare and makes data values not as consistent. So if you are checking the bottom of the, uh, of the color wheel through the Lexan, um, what we found is that it's more successful when you turn that backlight off. Yeah, yeah. To, turn, to do that, it's nothing in software. It's just a physical switch you flip on the V3 sensor. All right. Thanks, guys. Um, now, I missed over the climbing subsystem earlier, so why don't you guys go ahead and come on up here, and you can talk so about what ben, you So, Ben, while we're doing that, a couple oh, questions from couple chat. Questions. Uh, right. Go ahead and answer right. more of a general yep. programming question that we have. Uh, is there a plan for doing any sort of vision tracking uh, or anything like that? Um, yeah, we, uh, we're going to be trying to use the, the limelight. Uh, this is actually the first time 225 will use the limelight, so I'm anxious to see how it goes. Uh, obviously, other teams have reported great success. Um, in the past, we've done a mixture of uh, custom computer vision options, but uh, I think the, the limelight is the, the way to go for the C, you know, CV and FRC for the future. Any other questions on the uh, code side? Nope. Okay. All right. Let's uh, go ahead and bring in the climbing team, and you guys can talk about what you got going on here. Hi. I am Massimo Pizzo, an alumni of uh, FRC Team 1257. Um, I'm Pranav. I'm an alumni and mentor of 6880. I'm Lucas. I'm an alumni of 1922 Osram and a mentor of 5813 Morpheus. All right, so I guess we're going to be talking about what we've completed for the climber design. I think to start off, we're going to take you over to the rudimentary CAD that I've prepared for this. Um, right, right now, this is um, pretty simple. We're basing our design off of uh, TechFire's 2019 Basing our design off of TechFire's 2019 elevator, um, so we are using some of the parts from that. Um, God. And right now the CAD's pretty simple. We just have uh, it's obviously going to be on both two sets of rails, and we're going to have a, a middle section, a uh, first stage which can swing up, and then this isn't catted yet because we haven't done any prototyping, but we're going to have a mechanism that will allow us to slide back and forth on the bar, um, slide back and forth on the bar to adjust our center of mass in order to achieve those balance points. And that will be able to flip up um, after the climber deploys in order to conserve on space. So take it over to the physical part. Yeah, so um, as Nasi mentioned, uh, we We've been spending a lot of time cannibalizing the uh, 2019 practice spot for its lift. Um, and we've decided to use NEOs for the motor. Um, as of now, we have one NEO, but we're thinking of possibly using two, depending on how quickly we can um, get the slip running and um, if it'll be able to hold the robot. Um, and 
So right here we have one of our two elevator beams, which has the carriage assembly on it currently. Uh, so this will be sliding up to lift our uh, hook mechanism up to the climbing bar, and then we'll pull us back down using the Neo in a chain lift. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I do want to mention that this is going to be a one-stage lift. Um, we've actually been calculating the heights, and um, it's possible to for us to reach up to the um, the shield generator at um, even if it's tipped all the way to the other side, and you have to reach up to the highest point which I believe is six feet, six inches, something like that. Yeah, so, and the way we've accomplished this is through the um, flip-up um, latch that Masi mentioned. So we're still developing that, um, but we hope to have that um, for you guys tomorrow. Awesome, thanks guys. Um, and I will note that we're also looking at doing some level of uh, of self-balancing here. We're going to be investigating that going into tomorrow and seeing what we can accomplish there. Um, yep. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's anything, right? Yeah. Anything. Yeah. So long as you're with, as long as you're in the rendezvous zone. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, um, yeah, so with that, uh, I think uh, we could take some more questions. Sure, we can ask more. By, by the way, I think my mic cut out the last uh, question before, um, which uh, Ben answered was, how tall can the robot be during the end game? Uh, so a few other questions coming in, uh, starting up uh, from Mecha Muffin. Have y'all, I'm going to read it like how that person said, have y'all considered an FTC Velocity Vortex style intake slash feed? Velocity vortex intake uh, slash feed. Uh, help me out with what that. I'm less uh, less into. Here, here. Why don't you come over here so you could describe what that is? Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, for velocity vortex FTC, um, they basically had uh, small uh, wiffle balls. Think of like fuel but smaller, and they would um, intake them, and you can only hold like three at a time, and then shoot them into the um, kind of like uh, circular goals that would change position. Um, so it's basically like uh, intake and then spit out with flywheels. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, I think we're, we're going this particular route right here. It's been a lot of kind of traditional FRC, the type of stuff that we know. We know that teams like uh, 217 have used these spirals. One of those things that we have these experiences that we can call back on that we know work really well for FRC. Uh, next question. I'm not sure this is about the intake or not. It wasn't specified, but Trishula555 said, will the compliant wheel compressing affect the diameter of the wheel and the accuracy of your encoder measurements? Yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah, gotcha. So that being for the color wheel, that's a good question, and that's uh, that's uh, something that we will note for going forward. The compliant wheel that we don't, that, we are, that we're using isn't really that much compression. It's the 60A ones. But we'll try a number of different wheels on there. It's easy for us to switch out if we find it's not being accurate. Uh, Necro Creature asks, uh, in regards to the hopper, is it going to be attached to a shooter in house? How will it be attached if so? Yeah, so we'll be attached to a shooter. Do you guys uh, want to come up and talk a little bit about what our plan is here? Yeah. All right. Um, so basically what we'll be doing is uh, putting the shooter. Um, there's a roof that goes on the hopper that we uh, forgot to show. Um, so basically it's going to go up there like that. And what that's going to do is um, when the balls spiral around and queue up, we'll have a feeder wheel here that will hold the balls in place until the shooter's uh, aimed and up to speed. And at that point, this, the feed wheel will start pulling balls up one at a time while the hopper continues to push them uh, forward and up. And at that point, the uh, goal is to be able to shoot the five balls um, as quickly as possible with uh, the best accuracy possible so that we can up our cycle count. All right, before we get to our next question, uh, we're going to be starting the Animark t-shirt giveaway. That's right by Ben. Yep, right uh, in just a moment, we'll give you the keyword for that. Uh, but don't forget, before we do that, we do have to say thank you once again to our friends at Stryker uh, for their awesome sponsorship of First Updates. Now, once again, Stryker, looking for people who are in first. They want to support you in your first career. Uh, they are truly looking for, if you are in first and you want to work and still be in first and actually have your employer support you being in first, 
look at Stryker, S-T-R-Y-K-E-R.com, or go to careers.stryker.com forward slash first to see what available opportunities you might have. Uh, guys, have you seen 2767 Strike Force? They build a pretty amazing machine, and uh, that's a lot of Stryker mentors on there. So that's pretty good faith for me. So go check them out. Once again, careers.stryker.com forward slash first. Yeah, two-time world champions, Tyler. Not many teams can say that. Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Uh, we're going to start that Andy Mark giveaway then for the uh, T-shirt that we have up on screen. The keyword, if you're interested in winning, is going to be 15 years. 15 years is what you need to type in. Uh, for That's for 15 years of Andy Mark being around. Congratulations to Andy Mark uh, for being an amazingly successful company, really supporting first, making things great for teams. 15 years. Type that in chat. Don't forget to click that follow button. That's your opportunity to win. Or if you choose to step up, subscribe for free through Twitch Prime or for just a few bucks a month, you get five times chance to win the giveaway. So good luck everybody we'll draw for that in just a few minutes a few more q a's to go through if you've got any more questions at first updates now in chat yeah uh, and on that tyler i must say that we at uh, first all right if you're watching live sorry about that a uh, little technical difficulties there uh but more questions to ask as we uh go through uh so somebody asked i think we talked about the github uh but is the cat also gonna be made publicly available and anything else that might be made publicly available where can people find that yeah um whatever we have available we'll get that out there and we'll make sure it's published on our link on chief delphi at whatever location it is um uh, that's that's to be determined but we will uh, make sure that the link gets posted on our chief delphi thread so just make sure that you check that out and then we'll make sure that that gets blasted across our various social media as well yeah speaking of which too if you haven't seen already there is a mega thread on chief delphi which i'm going to put the link in chat uh go check that out that's where we're posting a lot of our videos of course all the youtube will be at firstupdatesnow.com forward slash or uh sorry youtube.com forward slash first updates now uh but a lot of stuff go check out that mega thread on cd that we just posted the uh link for uh for a lot of great resources uh, as we go through uh next question coming through uh mecha muffin asks uh you guys were talking about the limelight before i'm yeah. uh, wondering if anybody's heard of uh the oscar eye and, and i'll clarify a little bit the oscar eye is a open source uh uh project that i think is still in beta i don't even think it's publicly available um that you can pre-order that's using a much more price effective system for vision tracking yeah, I, I was. Uh, I actually found out about it through the fun stream from a few days ago, actually, which was uh, which was very interesting to learn about it. It's nice that there's a, a low cost vision option that might be out there, but um, we don't have a whole lot of experience of it, and we don't have necessarily any team testimonials, or we don't have one in hand. So it's hard for us to use something like that that we don't necessarily have in hand, especially. So, you know, it may be a great product. Um, don't don't know. It seems uh, it's certainly cost effective for vision. And I think can help a lot of teams, especially if it's going to be effective like that. But um, it's not something we can use if we don't have it in hand, unfortunately. All right, next question uh, coming in. Uh, this might be some more uh, general questions, but uh, Ask Science, I don't know how to pronounce this person. Oh, Eskessian, there we go. Uh, it says for Eric and Sarah, uh, do you miss your team or are you never coming home? Do you want to answer this? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> We miss you guys. We'll be home soon, maybe. Depends on if the food here remains really great. In that case, it might take a little longer. Yeah, uh, of note here, we've uh, you know been uh, been providing food to everyone. It's it's like volunteering here that we've been providing food to everyone who's come to help support the RA3D, and we are super proud and super happy to have as many as much support as we do from the first community here working uh, working with us to uh, provide information to everyone. You know, we we hope everyone's having fun at home as well. Uh, next question just came up in chat from a lot of garbled letters put together uh what kind of wheels are you using and why are they six inches or eight inches or traction i'm guessing yeah. guessing they're asking about the drive yeah so if you bring the camera down here sean these are six inch um these are what we got them right on there right now is the vex traction tires uh a lot of this we are using because we have it on hand here i would imagine there are many useful solutions that you can use for this we need to have something that we could make sure got over the berm and um, a after getting over the berm also, just make sure that we had eight wheel drives to keep it stable. So when we go through those particular criterion, this is what we could get together quickly. Um, and and uh, 
All right, a couple more left to go uh, from John Nimi. Uh, were any of the RE3D team members around in 2012? So I'm not sure if they're asking about RE3D in 2012, but I think quite a few of us who had been around uh, for a while. Quite, quite a few of us. You're around everyone who was in 20, around in 2012, right? And hope the camera pans in time. All right, uh, bu 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 uh, personal question here. Uh, where did Alex get that Steamworks Build Season shirt from? Alex, you want to come over here and just talk about where you got the shirt? <laughs> there you go. You had to get one from a Team 11 team member. All right, uh, question just came in from B Guy Dude. Uh, where is the control panel rotator going to contact the control panel? Is it from the side, the top, or the bottom? That, that's a good question. Um, yeah, you, you want to talk about this too? We'll, uh, we'll suit back to Alex. And... All right, guys. So we we're hearing that the audio is uh has kind of cut out here. So give me a second. Let me let me have that real quick. We're gonna make a live fix here. Sorry, folks. One second. That doesn't mean you put the camera on me though. I think somebody pressed the button to shut it off. So, or the battery's dead. Nope. So yeah. <laughs> Check, 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 one, two. Check, one, two. There we go. Yeah, guys, be nice and loud with the mic. And don't press the button. Not the microphone. All right, here we go. All right, as many of you watched today, I'm, we've learned a ton about... Uh, you know, uh, ver various AV things uh, that we will improve throughout the rest of this broadcast uh, in the days going forward. But, um, yeah, any further questions, Tyler? Yep, a couple more to ask, and we're going to draw for that Andy Mark t-shirt giveaway. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Falcon 500s, ask B-Guy Dude? Yeah, so the Falcon 500 is a cool motor. Um, you know, we don't necessarily have any in hand, so it's hard for us to really do anything with that right now or, um, or try it, but it's definitely an interesting option for many teams these days. All right, uh, deal with it, 27. Uh, do you guys work with any first alumni, and if so, is there an application process, and where are we located? Well, we're mostly first alumni, I think. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, how, how do people get involved with First Capital RE3D and where are we located? Well, that, that was an interesting one. Um, basically, the first year, it was kind of, I reached out to some 2590 friends and uh, 225 alumni, and we all got together and did it. This year, it was a little bit different, where I kind of put it on the FMA Discord, put it on the normal Discord, put it on Facebook, put it on Chief Delphi, and then it was back in September, and we took who responded here, and uh, and here we are, you know, so um, pretty much uh, the easiest way to do it is just contact someone involved, and then they'll get you connected in. Yeah, oh, where are we? Oh, we're in uh, York, Pennsylvania here. We're in 225 shop. So this is uh, if you, you know, do the scan across the top. Yeah, you can take a look at, uh, you know, everything that's uh, about where we are here. Yeah. All right, a couple last questions, uh, and then we'll be wrapping up. Drawing for the Anymark giveaway uh, from uh, Dr. Comrade. Uh, what's the gearbox ratio on the shooter head, and is it a fixed hood? Yeah, the gearbox ratio right now it's a it's a fixed hood right no. yeah well well it, it's it's adjustable fixed yeah yeah so right now this is on here pretty solid but if we loosen these bolts this is just um some of the 80 20 sliders so this um can go down mm -hmm. um it's about one and a quarter inch um that we can get it to move and the gearbox is five to one all right last question and we're going to wrap up uh so we won't be taking more questions after this uh do you think pneumatic wheels are viable this year? Um, sure. There, there's no reason pneumatic wheels wouldn't be viable. It's just not something that we feel is necessarily necessary because you're not, 
doing you're not climbing over like a significant thing like the defenses or you're not dropping from a high location like you might have seen like if last year had had higher higher level two like the was in the original plan then maybe you might have looked at pneumatic wheels in those situations but the the field doesn't necessarily call for it this year so that's one of the reasons we're staying away because it takes more space yeah a num among a, num a number of other things yeah yeah a and wait yeah wait as well um, yeah, of note, like we're ending questions here, but feel free to sh keep shooting questions uh, throughout the night. We'll, uh, we'll respond ad hoc and, uh, and try to fill you in about what's going on. How late are we going till tonight? Midnight and maybe later, depending. Um, but it's midnight it, Eastern, by midnight the way, folks. Midnight Eastern, yes. Um, it, it's, uh, it's really as late as the team wants to go for that. Um, but obviously we do know sleep is very important and everyone is going to make sure to get sleep because, you know, we're running 15 hour days and that takes a lot of effort. So, um, you know, just, uh, keeping, keeping that in mind, um, we'll go as late as we need to go. All right, let's go ahead and draw for that Andy Mark t-shirt giveaway. Uh, once again, uh, if you do win, please reach out to first updates now, either on Twitch or on our discord, uh, with your first name, last name, mailing address, that sort of thing. This is a specific uh, extra large t-shirt just as a heads up to everybody on there so you know either you're gonna drown in it or you're gonna be like me and rage out hulk style uh as my pajama pants so wait shirt which way am i going who cares all right so the winner of the giveaway let's go ahead and roll for that remember subscribers get five times luck is going to be mecha muffin congratulations mecha muffin two subscribers winning today so we have yep, clearly mecha rigged muffin. this uh so clearly we need to be putting the rigged emotes in chat congratulations mecha muffin you have won the annie mark t-shirt uh ben as we wrap up uh here today any last things you want to talk about for i3d always we're gonna let you guys get back to work yeah uh that's about it um just keep on watching here we're probably gonna try to have a running drive going we'll keep iterating on the shooter we'll keep iterating on the hopper we'll keep iterating on the intake this robot's going to have a lot of subsystems we're probably going to use every pdp slot it's going to be very complicated like last year's was but we're going to try to make everything you know super synergistic and effective here because there's uh i think this th th there's a lot of stuff going on in this game and we want teams to have a good idea about how a way to accomplish all of them um i will say and i think you agree with me here eric that serializing is probably going to be the hardest challenge for teams this year i i entirely agree we're we're looking at tackling many hard challenges including tuning a shooter including trying to balance our center of gravity while we're already hung and i personally think that serializing the balls is going to be the hardest one it's it's good that we have a flat field this year because there's a lot going on and there's um so this game is going to be very um it's there there may be a, a higher a higher ceiling than there have been in some past games so it's going to be uh it's going to be a fun season there's going to be a lot going on that that has to be accomplished in this game all right thanks everybody for tuning in that's going to end our actual show but we will continue streaming if you're watching us live don't forget to check out our archives youtube.com uh forward slash first updates now lots of great videos up there you can learn a bit more and of course watch us here at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now With that said enjoy the rest of our 3d if you're watching live not good night everybody and we'll see you next time on fun talk to you then thanks for watching if you want more fun content be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos you can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Thanks to Rev Robotics and all of our first capital RA3D sponsors.